called the Savannah airplane. And this is one of those, uh, the short takeoff and landing means this is an airplane that can be used in a lot of environments. You can use it on a nice uh, concrete tur uh, uh, airport like this one is, but you can also land this out in the bush pretty well. First of all, a little longer nose on this one, also a little wider cockpit, and all these little black things up here, the little plas pieces of plastic, these do some real magic. Now, we've heard of vortex generators, but it always kind of amazes people how a piece this small and arranged all the way along the leading edge of the wing can make this airplane take off and land even shorter. And even though this appears to disturb the airflow, what it really does is make the wind, uh, the air hug the wing that much better so that you get better low speed performance out of it and helps make the short takeoff and landing characteristic that much more solid. Well, it's an all metal airplane, I mean, throughout. Uh, wings, every part of it's all metal. But, and, and the way they painted this one with this whole yellow interior just makes it, just as I'm sitting here, it feels very bright. But that's also helped because there's a full skylight above me. And so a lot of light is coming into the cockpit, makes a nice comfortable feel to it. But it's a nice broad width here too. A couple of big guys could be in this airplane very comfortably, Dave. Now, again, the instrument panel on this is uh, getting back to uh, the older generation, but they got the new technology in there too. Yeah, kind of a mixed breed here, and of course they can make it both ways. One they showed down at the Sebring show uh, last year, I believe it was, they had, had full glass panel across, so you can kind of have it the way you want it. And then, indeed, they'll offer that to you. But I kind of like this arrangement here with a uh, uh, basically your uh, kind of a variation on the old six pack, but with a uh, full GPS electronic device in the middle. And uh, then a whole row of switches right here along the bottom where they're nice and easy, easy to reach and easy to tell what the positions of them are and including some guards over here on your uh, master switch so you don't inadvertently bump them in flight. And the control system again is unique to this type of airplane. Well, it is. This is a, we've seen a few of this uh, Y-stick combination. This one's a little different, though, in that they both have uh, trim controls right on the end of the joystick, and that's nice. So if you're flying from this side, it's actually quite a nice angle here to it. And the same thing would be true on this side again. So if you're flying and you've got an instructor situation, the instructor can ride right with the student and show him what he needs to do. But one more nice feature. On both sides of the aircraft here, you got throttles, and both on the outside. So one hand on the joystick, one hand on the throttle and you're controlling things just the way you should and you don't have to switch hands and move things around in order to be able to do what you need to do on a takeoff or a landing. And, uh, how do they handle the ground handling up? Well this is a uh, this is a tri-gear airplane and uh, and so it uses a steerable nose wheel and you can see down here and fortunately all this nice bright paint makes it easy to look down here we see it's got rudder pedals on both sides only on the left side of this particular airplane have they installed tow brakes so you've got a lot of control capability here with tow brakes like that to help accentuate the steering. And is there flaps on this airplane down? Yes, and in this case uh, they are right between the uh, the left seat where the pilot in command almost always sits uh, and you've got a flap handle right here in front of you that moves back and forth and allows your adjustment and it's right up here where you can get at it. Now it's not going to be in your way because it's on either side of your, or it's in between your legs, uh, but it sure is easy to reach. And then if you can get your camera down here a little bit more, you can see the fuel uh, cutoff switch that he's got right down here on the floor. So in addition, uh, we see the way it's set up here, but the company assures us that they also offer a dual joystick arrangement, and you can have tow brakes on both positions if you want that extra equipment. And instead of the mechanical flap, you can have electric flaps, which then could be a panel-mounted switch and any pilot could operate it easily. So you got quite a bit of room in here to carry some extra stuff with you. Right behind the seats, you got a nice bulkhead, solid bulkhead wall here. You got this nice little cargo netting, and I've got a pre pre done this here so I can get it off easily. But just move that down. That way, nothing comes forward and, and bumps into you. A couple extra seat cushions here if you need to be adjusted for height. They've got a couple of components here that just take it off. But I can't hardly even see all the way. I can't reach all the way back in here. So there's quite a bit of room back here and a sturdy area that can carry some extra luggage with you for when you get to your destination. But you could reach it in flight if you needed to. Well, what kind of power are they using in a stand? Well, they like to use the 912, and they will offer that in the, the, in the ULS model, and they'll offer that to you in either the 80 or the 100, but the 100 is what comes standard on this airplane, which will give it some impressive performance. That much power and a three-blade prop and a wing that's highly efficient at slow speeds uh, just about guarantees that the STOL part is just what they say. So what kind of performance would we get out using the uh, Rotex uh, engine? Yeah? Well, you know, you're going to cruise at about 105 miles an hour in this aircraft, but the beauty of it is, is that whole slow speed thing that they've optimized with the wing design and various other attributes of it means it'll stall at about 30 miles an hour, and under full power, we're told it'll stall at only 26 miles an hour. That's hardly moving through the air, and yet this airplane can manage that kind of thing. So a slow speed delight, if you got to get 
get it into a rough environment somewhere or a very short field. Shouldn't be any problem in this airplane. Now, have you done a flight report on this one, Dan? I have done a, a flight report on the Savannah some years ago, and uh, that's available on my website, bydanjohnson.com or bydanjohnson.com.